Hello everybody and welcome back to Watching Wolford. I'm Ash and today, after the Soap Week is happening, both Emmerdale and Coronation Street having a big Sun Week, I thought it'd be a good time to lump them both together as we don't usually cover either on the channel. I thought it'd be good to lump both together and tell you all of my thoughts. I'm going to go the way it first um, came out and that's obviously Emmerdale first and then Coronation Street. Emmerdale had a 30 minute episode while Coronation Street had an hour long episode of two episodes stacked side to side. So obviously there's going to be a lot more talking about Corrie as that's simply my more enjoyed one and I've also not really been watching Emmerdale that much so I've obviously pieced together a lot of the stuff that I haven't seen um, but ultimately I don't really feel like there was too much to talk about because fundamentally both shows were very disappointing. Um, I think I've gotten quite used to EastEnders current run of form and how strong it's been as a whole. Even these like just even these normal weeks are becoming fantastic. So ultimately there was just a lot of disappointment on this one. As I don't know man, it was just there's a lot of dissonance really. I think basically I've never really been too keen on the Steven stuff, if you've seen any of my other Kari videos on the channel. It's kind of I don't know man, it's just it's not it's not here, it's like a comedy serial killer. Um and obviously with Emmerdale I stopped watching because I found myself having too much to do. Um, but hey, I'll go through the main bullet points and see what happened. Okay, so obviously there was a big mystery as to who is the hooded figure that Kane and Caleb have been keeping in the uh, farm. Um, and this ended up to be... Fucking Aaron Dingle. Um, and I don't know, man. <laughs> I'm not saying it felt like he was only back like not too long ago, but it may have only been like two years. But he was already back last year, anyways. Um, at least I could have sworn he was. But it, honestly, it doesn't feel like he was gone that much. Um, and it's not really like the time has been kind to him. Obviously, since I'm not super aware of what's been going on in Emmerdale, I vaguely kept up, but not really. I was wondering if I was going to see a lot of people being like, Yeah, Aaron's back. Woo. And then I looked and everybody just like, Ah, oh, for fuck's sake <laughs> which i wasn't expecting that sort of reaction honestly i was expecting a bit more fanfare towards him but ultimately i'm not i'm not saying it feels like it feels like aaron is the ben mitchell of emmerdale and i don't know if that comparison is apt so all you emmerdale people have to tell me if that is apt um but it does just feel like he, you know, has a lot of trauma, gets angry at people, lashes out, blah, blah, blah. Chaz, Aaron, blah, blah, blah. Messy, etc. And Chaz manages to find Aaron, despite being at this, like, hidden farm or something. Like, they're, they're at Wiley Farm. I don't really know what the fuck that means. I would assume it's out of the way and, like, across the village. So, you know, she finds him, and ultimately it means that, you know, they untie him. He's very angry. Kane, Kane and Moira are like, it's not our fucking problem and he's like you see how bad he is um excuse me essentially it's because obviously aaron's been struggling um after live leaving um and ultimately that seemed to manifest in him like taking fights with people who he shouldn't be taking fights with um and it makes sense um yeah, it's just, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, it's simply saying, it, it seems like he's angry, he's not dealing with the grief, and now Kane and Moira and Chaz are gonna, like, get him through it. Um, we also see that Chloe has heard about Charity and Max sleeping together, and she's obviously jealous, she's like, do you love me? He's 100%. She has this weird chat with, um... Amy, Amy, you know, Vanessa's sister, one with a baby, married to Nate. Yeah, I think it, is it Amy? 
No, that's that's Amy Wyatt. Who the? F oh well, we all know who we're talking about. Um. Tracy, Tracy, there we are. She's talking to Tracy about, you know, the firstborn. She has a bit of a meltdown. But ultimately, at the end of the episode, Charity and Mac, as it seems like her, it seems like Chloe, Mac, and Ruben are off to go stay somewhere else um, to live together separately. Mac gives a big, like, like talk with Charity, like, I hope you find someone who makes you happy. And obviously, Chloe sees this, interrupts, and is clearly livid and absolutely spinning with jealousy. Um, next up, Sam is suspicious about Kim because she's seemingly hiding where Lydia is. Obviously, Lydia hasn't told Sam that she was raped yet and is terrified of doing that. Um, and yeah, it's uh, it was just Sam's like Sam's piecing together that something's wrong, but he doesn't really know what just yet. Um, and the other bit is Jay and Sonny's dad show up and. It's obviously it's played by the actor who played Ranveer, who was Ravi's dad and the guy who genuinely tried to rape Suki Panasa. It's weird seeing him in this light. He does, he, it's hard to look different. Um, but yeah, it's uh, he looks the exact same. He's going to tell them the truth. And it's obviously been reported that this this character is not he's not supposed to be an all out like hero. You know, he's uh, he's a complex man. He's got principles and morals and shit. So it'll be interesting to see how it goes. I'm not too cared. I'm not too caring. I haven't watched much of Sunny. I never really liked much of Jay. So ultimately, I can't really comment. Um. Yeah, they also kept doing these really dodgy, like special effects, which I was not sure about because it just keeps like phasing in and out. And as someone who watched both Cory and Emma Dell, they were both basically using the same effect. Like the same effect was is pretty much like ooh, and it's like this weird like bluey grey. It was just weird. Um. <sighs> Sorry, I'm exhausted. Um. But yeah, it felt like they it felt like they copied the other show's homework and then went, oh yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll change it. They've changed like they they just changed the name at the top. Um, but yeah, that's it for the MDL. I thought it was quite an underwhelming episode, especially considering last this the last Super Soap week was obviously the uh, Mina Jutla one, and as campy as it was, it was electric. She was trying to kill everyone. Oh, it was great fun. It was chaotic. Um, and this one's just very grounded and very slow. Um, also, Caleb's getting yelled at by Nate to do work with a chauffeur business um, as Harry is watching. Obviously, I know that guy, I just watch, like Robert Beck, um, who played Fergus on Hollyoaks. He's, he's, a, he's just a very attractive, bold man. You know, he's got a very good face for being bold. <clears throat> there we are. Um, he's good at playing a villain. Um, uh, there we are. I thought it was a pretty underwhelming episode, though, and we're obviously ramping up. I'm sure if we've seen, if, if I would have seen a lot of this stuff simmering, I would have been a bit more excited. But ultimately, uh, it's fairly mid to me. I didn't really, n I didn't really know how I was supposed to be feeling about a lot of this. But I have somewhat kept up, so I wasn't completely out of the loop. Um, yeah, and I also just checked Reddit, and a lot of people are just kind of like, eh, kind of ass, really. Alright, so the Coronation Street stuff. Um, obviously, this week is all about saying goodbye to Stephen Reed. Um, and he's kind of planning to fly to Thailand. But, you know, Tim suddenly, like, his work, he starts to figure out that maybe, you know, maybe fucking Stephen's hiding something in the canal. Um, and, you know, he finds a body, calls the police, but Stephen's on the prowl. He saw him leave. Stephen gets in the cab and tries to strangle him with a tie. Which was funny because it had the fucking duck song. The it had the fucking chicken song. As comedy killer Stephen Reed tries to strangle Tim, and the way he 
Oh, Jesus. The way Tim gets away from this is he reclines the seat onto his knee and runs out the door. Um, and then climbs over a fence, but then, oh, he sees that his Tim's. He sees that his Tim's are untied. So he takes his sweet fucking time in, um, tying up his shoelaces, gets cracked over the head with a metal pipe, and he leaves him to die. And then when he still looks alive, uh, Stephen seemingly tries to suffocate him. And it looks like he's dead. I'm going to say that Tim's faking it. Um, but they are obviously setting up for a big kind of like... Because obviously Sally's like, oh, you know, he's, why wouldn't he want to spend the anniversary with me? Oh, he's going to be dead if he comes back, you know. They're setting up all that kind of stuff. I think Tim's too too important for character, but it would actually cement him as it would cement Steven as actually doing something important, so you know. And we didn't actually see him properly die. Steven was gonna set the car on fire, but he saw a helicopter and went, Oh, this might alert a signal. Um also we generally see Carla trying to warn off Jenny. Um to be like, yo, Steven's dangerous, right? He he, what? he did frame me. Yeah, I frame? He did dose me with the LSD to try and fuck me up. And I've got it tested and everything. Uh, the reason why she's being quiet about it is the police are doing their their investigation. Um, but they don't feel like there's enough time. They need time to build a case. But obviously, oh, excuse me again. But obviously... You know, Stephen wants to escape now. Um, like he like, and Stephen tries to torch the car with Tim in the boot. Obviously, we don't see it, but yeah. And then when Stephen gets back, um, he has blood on his neck. Uh, Elaine and Sally see it, and then, and then he talks with Jenny like, "Oh yeah, we're still going to Thailand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All good, all good." And Jenny's like, no. How about we do it in a month? Tell me we do it in a month. And then Stephen just goes, well, I'm, I want to push forward the flights till tomorrow. I want to leave tomorrow. And as the final things happen, um, obviously a body has been found in the trunk. This being, uh, I assume it's Teddy's body, right? Um, unless they already discovered Teddy's body. But, um, I, yeah. Exit, exit week sees another, yes, exactly. Uh, Teddy's body has been found. Um, and there we are. And that's what they do in the final scenes of the episode. Is that Tim is, uh. Tim is in danger. They found Teddy's body and time is up for Steven. Um, once again, I've not really been a big fan of the Steven Reed stuff. I've not really been a big fan the entire year. It's what's really like dampened my enjoyment of Coronation Street this last year. Like, it's not been a good year for Cory. I'd argue between like the acid attack stuff has been strong, but like you know, the Steven stuff has been fucking shit. The Tyrone and Cassie stuff is also... It just... Like, why can't that just be Abby's mum instead? Like, it would make so much more sense. They look a lot more alike. You know, like... It would be perfect. It would make perfect sense. Um, maybe a mum's dead or something. Um... But yeah, there we are. That's the reactions to episode one of the Cory and Emmerdale Super Soap Week. Both episodes just underwhelming, really. I'm not really too invested in either storyline right now. And I kind of feel bad saying that because I'm a massive Coronation Street fan. And I was getting into Emmerdale before I started doing the channel and therefore had much more stuff I needed to do. I'm sure I could probably watch it now that I have more time on my hands, but ultimately... Only time will tell if I actually continue after this point, but obviously I'll be covering the rest of the soap week just to make sure that, you know, people are caught up in case they can't watch it live or want to see my little dumb, dumb thoughts about it. 
there we are i've been ash from watching walford make sure to tell me what you think in the comment section down below which episode was better were well, both mid whatever you want to say tell me in the comment section and make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel but thank you for watching the Corey and emmerdale super soap week reactions and i'll see you in the next one bye bye